What's up here in the Beat Sessions? I'm your host, Mitchell Weary. We are talking about the brand new record from Kelly Okarike entitled The Waves Part 1, which he released on May 28th. This is the fifth solo album from the Block Party Frontman. It's his follow-up to 2019's 2042. And this record is unlike just about anything that you've heard from him, whether it be with Block Party or his solo work. This is a guy that I grew to love because of his big songwriting style. I love the sonic landscapes of Block Party music, especially the riff exchange that often occurs in a lot of their tracks. I love just how groovy their music is. You can dance to it. It feels good. Even when the lyrical content gets a little dark, you can still just dance the pain away. One of my favorite things about this band, this record is not that. <laughs> as, as the title would kind of allude to, The Waves, this record has kind of that laid back island feel to it. And I love that the two kind of go hand in hand. I love that you know, island music, no matter what it might be, is very minimalist and most often. It's usually just someone with a guitar or a ukulele or something simple or whatever. And, uh, and it seems to just fall in line with the vibe. When you're in a tropical paradise like that, the idea is to get away from everything. You got the beach, you got a great view. It's the simple things. And sometimes all you need is just a guitar. And that's what Kelly's going with on this record. A lot of that coming from the isolation that we faced during the pandemic just wasn't really able to work with anybody. And so rolled with that, made this record. And, and you can certainly tell that the idea was for him to basically just do his own thing and fill up as much as he can. And he didn't go through this you know, process of you know, trying to build and layer textures and do all this stuff. This is a, a record that, you know, if he just wanted to walk into a bar with his guitar and maybe a loop pedal, he could pretty much do all of these songs, which is kind of a cool thing about it. I, I really dig the experimental nature of it. It's something different from what he's done before. A lot going on lyrically that's cool. Um, you know, disparate themes that, uh, that, that, are, that are very interesting to, to see him explore as he's coming to age. He's almost 40 now. He has kids. But, you know, the solitude and angst that a lot of us felt versus uh, empathy and support that, you know, th these are things that he started to, to talk about being a father now. And it's, it is really interesting how the two, in a lot of ways, do go hand in hand. And so I think it's a very interesting concept uh, throughout this album, the way that, that he moves back and forth between those two things um, and, and how, you know, off, you know, in the end, oftentimes, you know, solitude and angst is uh, is a result of not of not getting that empathy empathy and support that one needs throughout life and uh and so yeah so i i really dig what he's doing on this a lot of instrumental tracks on this as well it's it's probably my biggest hang up with this record honestly because i love his voice again i love when he goes big with the voice and you just you don't get a lot of that on this record a lot of it is recitative as well and there's you know i think there's like three or four instrumental tracks also so he talked about the creation of this record and you know ultimately it started off being an instrumental project but then as songs began to develop he began to add lyrics and so yeah i mean if you're looking for those that big vocal style that that you're used to hearing from him as well that is kind of absent on this record but some of the highlights i i really like the song didn't see it coming didn't they didn't see it coming excuse me uh reggae vibe to it really laid back dig that track for for that reason, How to Beat, um, The Lie Detector is maybe my favorite song on the track. It's got this uh, great opening riff, cool harmonies, which is not a, you know something that goes on a lot in the record, so it's really cool to kind of see him play around with his voice and do that. Um, the, one who, uh, the One Who Held You Up sounds, uh, sounds like a, kind of some of the mellow stuff from, from Silent Alarm. Think of a song like Modern Love. Uh, things of that nature a little bit. So it's it's interesting to kind of see him dabble in, in that territory. He definitely does incorporate some of that style into the music. The song The Patriots, uh, it, really interesting kind of like two-part track, mellow intro, and the toning of his guitar kind of reminds me of At The Drive-In a little bit, especially just the simplicity of that opening riff. But instead of, you know, building into something big, it uh, it transitions into this, you know, moody kind of urgent track, which, you know, is probably the fullest sounding this album gets. But it's, um, I, I, I'm still kind of having a hang up about this. I, I'm probably, while I really think this project is worth listening to, I'm going to do a vinyl pass just because there's so much other music of his that I dig. Um, I just, I don't see myself, as much as I enjoyed a lot of this, I just don't see myself throwing this record on often when I want to listen to Kelly because he's just become one of those people for me that, you know, I, I, I really like the block party stuff, especially the early stuff. 
It's just my thing to each their own. But I really hope you do enjoy listening to this record. I hope you find this review helpful as well. Subscribe to my channel, like this video. We'll see you in the live show on Sunday nights. Take care.